به برنامه نانگلاس ها خوش اومدید سلام به همه گی من مریم نمازی هم و من فریبورز پویا هستم در برنامه این هفته در رابطه با اعتراضات سراسری در ایران صحبت میکنیم نیاز به همبستگی بین المللی برای این اعتراضات و اینکه ترامپ اصلا نباید یک دستی به اون اعتراضات بزنه یا یه دخالتی بکنه مصاحبه این هفته مون با جیمی بنگاش سخنگوی شورای اکس مزلم بریتانیا و مبارز حقوق همجسگرایان فتوه احمقانمون از دیوبند دارال علوم دیوبند هندوستان مثل همیشه فتوه احمقانه منتشر کرده و این بار در رابطه اینه که سونی ها و شیعه هم نباید به عروسی هم دیگه برن نه بابا جدای طلبن همیشه و لحظه زیبای زندگیمون در رابطه با زنان ایرانه و ورودشون به استودیوم آزادی برای تماشای فوتبال جام جهانی برای اولین بار بعد از چهل سال و چقدر سحنه های زیبا متاسفانه تیم ملی نبرد ولی چقدر قشنگ بازی کردن دمشون گرم بابا باشی. اعتراضات در ایران میبینیم دوباره شدت گرفته در شهرهایی مثل تهران، قشت و شیراز این اعتراضات ادامه اون اعتراضاتی که شش ماه پیش ما دیدیم علیه وضعیت اقتصادی، علیه وضعیت سیاسی و این همچنان ادامه اون وضعیت و اعتراضه دقیقا این به شکلهای مختلف خودش نشون میده ولی به نظر میاد که یکی از خصوصیات این اتفاقی که داره میفته نه جنبه سراسری بودنش ما توی اعتراض و اعتصاب کامیندارای ایران دیدیم که هماهنگ شده در سراسر کشور اتفاق افتاد و نقش خیلی مهمی رو به نظر من داشت و امروز هم این اعتراضات رو که میبینیم خواست سراسری بودن و اون نیاز سراسری بودن این و هماهنگ بودنش رو هر روز بیشتر میشه حس کرد و این این یکی از خصوصیات بارز این اتفاقی داره میفته ولی جوهر این قضیه وضعیت فاسد جمهوری اسلامی و وضعیت به شدت غیر قابل تحمل اقتصادی تو ایرانه اصلا آدم وقتی داستان ها و اتفاقات و خبرای زند... که چطوری مردم تو این شرایط زندگی میکنن و چطوری جونشون به لب رسیده رو میشتبه میگه چطوری امکان پذیره که یک جامعه بتونه این رو تحمل بکنه و خب این خیلی مشخصه در ضمن این که خب خیلی از کارگرها حقوقشون رو نگرفتن خیلی از زیر خط فرق زندگی کنن بیکاری واقعا فراوون توی ایران به خصوص بین جوونا جدا از این مسائل میبینیم که به خاطر تورم برای مثال یا اینکه ارز داره همش عوض میشه دیگه الان به یه وضعیتی رسیده که کسی که میره مثلا امروز یه چیزی میخره یه یخچال میخره میاد دو روز بعد یخچال رو برداره ببره خونش مغازه دار بهش میگه که من دیگه نمیتونم اینو به این قیمت بفروشم به خاطر این انقدر دیگه قیمت ها تغییر پیدا کردم واقعا این چیز مهمیه و این نتیجهش این بوده که توی بازار توی مراکز خرید فروش توی شاپینگ سنتر ها مردم دیگه نه مغازه ها رو مجبور شدن ببندن و حالت و این خواست سراسری اعتراض و با این وضعیت اقتصادی اینا داره به هم قاطی میشه و وضعیت به وجود برده که میتونه جامعه ایران رو کاملا توی یه سطح دیگه قرار بده و اعتراضات مردم رو در واقع به شکل هماهنگ کننده ای به پیش ببره و این خیلی مهمه که هماهنگ باشه سازماندهی باشه به شکل سراسری نقش سراسریش خیلی مهمه و این در واقع حکومت اسلامی رو چیز میکنه فلج میکنه که نتونه مقابله بکنه با این وضعیت یعنی همین آخرین اعتراضات سراسری همین اعتراضات کارگران نفت بود که رژیم شاه و بنزانو آورد و دقیقا این نقش مهم اعتراضات و اعتصابات سراسری خیلی جدی اینجا و خب یه بخش دیگه این اعتراضات مردم اقتصاد و سیاست و در زم این فساد جمهوری اسلامی و نقشش توی خارج از کشور دقیقا هست. همه جاید میتونیم ببینید که خود جمهوری اسلامی یک سازمان کاملا فاسده که هیچ نقش و برنامه و منافع و نیاز جامعه ایران براش مهم نیست در واقع اون سلام و صلوات و این دستگاه مذهبی برای اینه که این فساد اینا رو بتونه بپوشونه نفت آب جنوب رو خود فسادشون رو حلال کنه دقیقا آره و دقیقا نگاه میکنیم مثلا آب و توی کشور جنوبی تو شهرهای جنوب مناطق جنوب ایران صادر کردن توی مذاکره و مناقصه کاملا فاسدی صادر کردن به عراق و کشورهای همسایه خود مردم این شهرها آب سالم ندارن بخونن و وقتی اعتراض میکنن آخوندو میفرسن جلو جواب مثلا مردم بده 
از با بطری آب آوردن مثلا دو جو بخشی از اعتراض میکنن چه رنگ اینو نگاه کنین آبیه که از شیر آب خوردنی برای ما میاد و آب با یه مناقصه و یه قراردادی فرستادن یه کشور دیگه یا این منطقه دیگه یا اینکه تمام امکانات جامعه رو بردن توی به خاطر پیشبرد اسلام حکومت و اسلامشون توی سوریه و منافعشون توی لبنان رو و غیر این کار میکنن و مردم واقعا جونشون به تنش رسیده این اعتراض سراسری اعتراضا اینا هماهنگ شده میتونه کاملا جمهوری اسلامی رو فرج بکنه و خب وقتی برخورد جمهوری اسلامی آدم نگاه میکنه میبینه که مثل همیشه کاملا ضد انسانی و ضد بشریه برای مثال خامنه ای گفته که این کار نیروهای خارج است خب این اعتراضات و روحانی که همش میگن و چقدر اصلاح طلبه و چقدر از این چرت و پرت در رابطه باش میگن مثلا گفته که هیچ اتفاقی نیفتاده هیچ مشکلی نیست توی ایران و کسایی که دارن اعتراض میکنن دارن سیاه نمایی میکنن درسته آقای روحانی برای شما خیلی راحته برای اخوندایی که جیباشون پر از پوله زندگی خیلی خوبه ولی ما داریم در رابطه بقیه مردم ایران صحبت میکنیم و خب میبینیم که رئیس قوه قضاییه میگه که اختشاشگران اختلالگران بعد اعدام بشن یعنی این برخورد جمهوری اسلامی به این مردمی که جونشون به لب رسیده و دیگه ن... پول ندارن که بتونن امکانات معمولی و بیسیک زندگ... زنده موندن رو بخرن و استفاده کنن و این وضعیتی رو به وجود میاره تو ایران و که به نظر میاد یه اتفاق پایه‌ای داره اتفاق میفته یعنی که نقش سراسری اعتراض ها و اعتصاب ها و اینکه چطوری واقعا مردم به هیچ دیگه پشتشون نیست پشتشون به دیواره جای دیگه نمیتونن برن هیچ عقب نشین دیگه نمیتونن بکنن و این اتفاق همه رو توی صحنه آورده که فای این پایان جمهوری اسلامی رو در واقع تو تاریخ ایران بنویسن و این اعتراضات به همبستگی کامل مردم جهان نیاز داره یعنی واقعا مردم دنیا باید پشت مردم ایران باشن نه دولت های مثل ترامپ و دولت آمریکا که حرف از فساد جمهوری اسلامی میزنه خودشون همون خودشون هم فساد فاسدن این دولت آمریکا حرف از فساد میزنه و حرف از اینکه باید تغییر بشه تو ایران ولی لطفا ما تغییر آمریکا رو نمیخوایم دقیقا میدونیم تغییر از سوی دولت آمریکا چه معنی داره برای دقیقا نگاه کن شما صحبت از فساد حکومت ایران میکنن باش مخالفت میکنن ولی کاملا عقب مانده ترین زد انسانی ترین آلترناتیو توی این صحنه دارن پشتیبانی میکنن مجاهد. از مجاهدی میخوان دفاع بکنن از جنات راست دفاع بکنن که در واقع یا از درون خود حکومت اسلامی سعی میکنن یه سری کسا رو جمع کنن یه وحدتی بینشون به وجود بیارن که این وضعیت رو حفظ بکنن و اجازه ندارن که مردم این نفسی بکشن تو اون جامعه کشورهای اروپایی دولت آمریکا تمام اینا دست به دست هم میدن که این وضعیت تغییر پایه‌ای نکنه اون بالای سری مهره عوض بشن و در واقع منافع خودشون از این طریق حفظ بکنن ولی پایان کار مردم این پایان این وضعیت به این بستگی نداره باید حکومت اسلامی حکومت مذهبی از انواع اقسامش توی جامعه ایران کاملا پاک بشه حق نفس کشیدن مردم حق دخالت مردم تو زندگی خودشون که بتونن آزادانه انتخاب بکنن باید جزی از پایه‌ای ترین استانداردهایی باشه که جا... آینده جامعه ایران رو بتونه رقم بزنه نان آزادی برابر I wanted to ask why you think it's important for ex-Muslims and the Council of Ex-Muslims mm. to march in gay pride. Yeah, so that's a really good question. Well, I think first of all, it's important to acknowledge that there are gay ex-Muslims as well. Uh, and Pride is about hosting a space for people who are LGBT and their allies. Um, so last year when we decided to march, we had a number of meetings prior to the march itself. Uh, and it was a very much a, a well thought through and coordinated uh, march that we had. In those meetings, we had a conversation about um, the struggles of LGBT both Muslim and ex-Muslim in uh, Muslim majority countries or Muslim majority states. And particularly pertinent at that time uh, was the press coverage of 
um, Chechnyan LGBT people. So whether they were gay or um, whether sorry whether they were Muslim or ex-Muslim, actually, the way that uh, Sharia and Islamic edicts were being used to persecute them. And in fact, we even had heinous statements by the leadership there stating that you know, gays would be wiped out by, uh, by the end of Ramadan or the start of Ramadan. Um, I'm paraphrasing, I can't actually remember the exact phraseology, but certainly something in the lines of, by Ramadan, uh, gays will be eradicated, there'll be no space for them. And we heard uh, stories of and reports of um, something that we haven't heard for a very long time, Mariam, gay people being rounded up into concentration camps. Um, and then there were further stories of uh, people being told that they're um, their, their gay child had been killed or they would go missing. So we were really clear that we wanted to march in solidarity for this. And we were mindful that sometimes the political message of Pride has been diluted by what seems like a, a very corporate message. Um, and Pride requires funding, so there has to be space for that um, funding to become a available and generated. But for us, it was so important to march in that march and bring this political message because actually CMB is a, uh, 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 an activist organization with a political message. And frankly, we didn't see enough of that at Gay Pride last year. Considering what is happening to our LGBT brothers and sisters in Chechnya and across the Muslim majority countries, we didn't see enough of that. And if nobody else is going to make those statements, we need to be the ones to do so and be unapologetic in our uh, conducting of that. Extremely relevant for us to have this protest given the fact that you have um, uh, you know, homosexuality being punished by the death penalty in 14 to 15 states. Mm, completely true. And I think sometimes what we're hit back with is, well, actually, um, when was the last time somebody was executed for homosexuality? Uh, and, and actually, you don't have to look that far back. Uh, in certain countries, you know, you can look in this decade and you'll find that uh, evidence for yourself. Um, however, sometimes we're hit with, well, what has that got to do with LGBT people in the UK? And that's not actually how activism works. So if we think about apartheid in South Africa, when we look at how international, um, there was an international garnering of support to remove apartheid, we live in a very globalist world and it's globalized and we're interconnected now in a way that we have never been. And it's important for us in Western liberal democracies where we have the ability to articulate a challenge to Islamic states that actually seek to uh, exterminate or kill LGBT people that we do so. We have a responsibility to do so. And it's not that we get complacent here with the rights that we have and forget about those who are suffering because they haven't had those rights. And it's not even far away, Mariam. Sometimes we think about far away places like Afghanistan or Pakistan, even more locally, if we look at what's happened at gay pride in Turkey, the last two gay prides in Turkey have been canceled. Uh, and when um, LGBT activists have tried to uh, have a gay pride despite the cancellation, they have been hosed down by water cannons by the state and shot with rubber bullets. And this is on, you know, Turkey is not far away. This is on our, one of our next door neighbors. So we need to be very, very loud and uh, very vociferous in our challenge towards these atrocities. They, they are atrocities. And also, of course, uh, quite a few of our members are refugees and asylum seekers from those countries mm. and they're fleeing those very laws. So it's very relevant even to a lot of people here. In the march, the CME march, there was some controversy around some of our placards, mm. uh, particularly around the East London Mosque saying that it incites murder and also placards such as Allah is gay or fuck Islam Islamic homophobia. Mm. Can you explain why we needed to have those placards? Certainly. So the fuck Islamic homophobia placard was one I designed myself. Uh, and uh, I'm quite pleased that it generated the dialogue that it did generate. So for those who may not have seen it, the uh, F-U-C-K Islam was in one color and then the ick homophobia was in a different color. So the, the sign had several readings. You could read it as uh, fuck Islam or fuck Islamic homophobia. So it was possible to read it in that way. Uh, and this was deliberately done. And the reason I did so was because that statement really 
really uh, garners the experience of LGBT people of Muslim heritage. So when I was a gay Muslim, and you know, all um, gay ex-Muslims are gay Muslims first by definition. So when I was a gay Muslim and I went to the mosque to try and find out how I could be halal as a gay person and still love a man and enter into a relationship. And they said, no, actually the punishment for this is death and it's disgusting and it's unnatural and it's a curse upon your heart. You just need to pray more. And then I went to family members and they said, oh, you know, this is disgusting. We will pray for you to make you get better. You can't live your life in this way. And then I went to the Quran and I read about the story of Lut. And then I went to the Hadith and I saw Hadith about throwing gays off the building. At that time, as a gay Muslim person, I thought, fuck Islam. Like I was so frustrated by my absolute condemnation it appeared at the time. And this was before we had groups like Iman or uh, Hadaya who were representing a voice for LGBT Muslims. So what I really wanted to capture with that sign was that actually whether you're a gay ex-Muslim or a gay Muslim, there are moments where this is how you feel and you just want to scream, fuck Islam, fuck Islamic homophobia. And it was important to articulate that message. And the reason it was important to do that, Mariam, is because one, pride is the one safe place gay people have in the UK or wherever to have a safety of numbers to articulate a frustration without a fear of violence and without a fear of violent repercussion. Because I cannot walk around my own community and articulate that or even talk to members of the Muslim community and say, you know what, sometimes I used to think, fuck Islam, I really did. That is not going to be well received. But amongst a march full of LGBT and their allies, in a march that has a history of challenging religious homophobia, I must be allowed to articulate the frustration I have with religion. And of course, there's this, uh, you know, there is a lot of criticism of religion in gay pride. Uh, it just seems that there's a particular sensitivity around Islam. Mm. So also the Allah is gay banner, for example, yeah. or uh, with regards to the East London Mosque. Talk about those as well, why those were important. Yeah, so I think when you, uh, when you grow up as LGBT in Muslim countries or Muslim societies or even in diaspora communities that have, a, have an Islamic um, uh, overarching Islamic uh, structure to them, then the juxtapositioning of the word Allah with gay is only juxtaposed with things like hates. Allah hates gays, Allah condemns gays, Allah will punish gays, and then we have a whole catalogue of punishments that gays will face. Uh, and also we even have a, 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 a multiple choice options of how to kill your gay, you know, hanging, stoning, whatever it is, you have these options. So what we wanted to do was juxtapose these words in a way that actually people of uh, Muslim heritage had not seen and allow them to feel the resonance of the emotions that they felt. And what we saw was actually when we held a placard quite simply saying, Allah is gay. There's no derogatory statement in that. We had vitriol come back from the Islamic community towards us. And we even had some vitriol coming back from LGBT, mem LGBT members of non-diaspora communities. So we had some uh, people who were like white or black who have nothing to do with Islam. And they said that we were being provocative and that we were um, offending people. But really, the offense was caused by the fact that we put Allah is gay. Those two words, Allah and gay, next to each other. And what that speaks to is the venom and hatred towards LGBT in our community, rather than activists who are bringing attention to that. It's so important to illustrate and highlight for people that our march in gay pride is not gay ex-Muslims or ex-Muslims punching down at uh, Muslim people is very much about ex-Muslims and gay ex-Muslims punching up at religious homophobia. And there's a clear distinction between those two. Yeah, definitely. And also, um, so what do you say to people who are saying, who are Muslims, who are saying that by ex-Muslims doing that, it's making pride feel mm. unsafe for Muslims yeah. and that they don't feel comfortable, it's offensive to them and we shouldn't do things like that. Yeah, so I think we have to be clear on what this is. So the, the struggle for LGBT rights 
is a human rights and civil rights struggle. And there's no getting away from that. Uh, I know that when we live in the UK, sometimes uh, if you're an LGBT person, because of the rights we enjoy in this country, and because the option you have actually, if you're a gay person of Muslim heritage, and you know that you're community is homophobic, you have this option of stepping out of your community into wider society, which is far more accepting. So we sometimes forget that this is a human rights and civil rights struggle. It is an argument to uh, validate the humanity of LGBT people in Muslim majority countries because they're not seen as human. And we need to get clear on that. They're seen as subhuman, animalistic, barbaric, perverted. You know, these are the words we use to describe them. So we have to be really clear on what this struggle is. It's a human rights struggle. And when we get clear on that as the foundation of what this is, understand that when that we had the idea that women would be allowed to vote, that was seen as radical and offensive. When we had abs abolitionists who said, people should not be property, black people should never be property, this was seen as not a middle ground negotiation. Oh, we can't speak to you guys. You're the absolute radicalist. Maybe some black people should have some rights, but we should still be able to own other black people. So the people who said women should have absolute equality, people who said that blacks should have absolute equality and should never be property, they were seen as radicals. In the same way we are having some people tarnish us who march for the rights of LGBT as we are radical, we're too far out there, we're offending people. Sim what is more bizarre though, is that the same people who say this have nothing to say about hadith that say gay people should be executed. They have nothing to say about um, the concept of the story of Lot being God condemning gay people for all eternity. They never seem to have, a, have, have the, the gumption or the ardor to take on board these challenging conversations. But when we step out into the limelight and we call for a cessation of killing LGBT people, and we say that actually we will challenge religion at every turn where it infringes on the human rights of LGBT people or apostates, somehow they find a voice and, and the will to engage to silence us. Is uh, what you're doing Islamophobic? Because that's another charge against you. Yeah. So, I mean, it's important for me to say I completely reject that word. It's a complete conflation of two different ideas. So there's uh, Islam, which is a set of ideas. And like all ideas, it should be crit criticized, like uh, capitalism, communism, uh, socialism, whatever it is, Islam, Hinduism, Christianity is a set of ideas. We are allowed to criticize it. We, we should welcome criticism of ideas so that those ideas develop. And actually, if we're savvy individuals, we should understand that by criticizing something, we will be able to improve it. Yeah. Uh, and then there's people who are Muslims and actually demonizing Muslims is not OK. And I will never uh, demonize Muslims. And most ex-Muslims that I know have Muslim family, Muslim friends, live in Muslim communities and they're not interested in demonizing Muslim. One, one of the things that we should get really clear about is that you do not care about Muslims more than we do. Like these are our families, these are our kin, these are our countries of origin. So we are doing this from a place of love and love and progress wanting. Yeah, we want to see our communities progress. So tarnishing us with this blanket term of Islamophobia, which just seems to, in this day and age, apply to absolutely anything that has any critic of, uh, of Islam and Islamic practice, is a way to essentially silence us. So I reject that. I really do reject that. If Muslims are offended by what we do, I think it's a pernicious argument to say that those who are defending themselves from religious persecution are offending those of the religion. You have twisted something there, and it's a pernicious argument. Um, finally, I suppose I'd like to ask you, uh, well, you know, you had to fight to go back to pride, in mm. a sense. There was a lot of arguments. Pride took eight months to decide whether they would let the Council of Ex-Muslims back. Mm. Uh, we are going back, so uh, why was it important to go back? 
So I think there was two pieces, two answers, I guess. So there's why is it important to go back and also what happened with Pride. So I felt quite heartened by our meeting by Pride, actually. I felt like the representatives who came to meet us took on board some learning. And uh, I think sometimes there's an element of protectionism around Muslim communities in the UK because they are a minority. If they become dehumanized, we see violence increase against people who become dehumanized, which is why I think it's so important for ex-Muslims to stand up for uh, Muslim people as human beings uh, because, because we should stand for everybody being a human being. So I felt like Pride came and met with us, took on board some learning and understood that actually we are not anti-Muslim, we are anti-religious uh, homophobia and we will challenge that. And when we drew some parallels for them around actually, you know, there were Christian people marching with blasphemous or um, uh, signs and it was absolutely fine. And actually the history of Pride, which challenges cultural and religious homophobia and political homophobia uh, at very institutional levels and uh, ideological levels. Once we extrapolated that for them and then we said well we're just doing the same thing with Islam there was some learning and understanding there and I'm very pleased that they took that on board uh, and I think they should be commended for that so why is it important for us to march this way yeah it's so important for us to march this year because one if we didn't march this year it would say that people were right yeah so actually that ex-Muslims are just a bunch of Islamophobes who hate Muslims even though they live in their houses and help them every day. Um, so it would have given credence to that narrative. Secondly, this is an education piece. So our presence and apostasy is a, is, is, is a topic that people don't necessarily understand. And as we were talking before about the international context of civil rights, we need to educate people on what's happening to apostates and what's happening to LGBT of Muslim heritage. And all too frequently, if something is not put in front of us, in our busy lives, it's very easy to ignore or not be aware of it. And one of the other things to draw attention to is that actually, sometimes organizations can march in gay pride and try to capitalize the LGBT movement for their own message. One of the things I'm very proud about CMB that we did was we made sure that whilst we were marching for apostate rights, we were really talking about LGBT in Muslim countries, whether they were gay or whether they were ex, sorry, whether they were Muslim or whether they were ex-Muslim. And we kept that as our dominant narrative and we intend to do so. And I just, I suppose because this uh, is also broadcast in Iran, mm. I'd like to ask if you have something to say to Iranian LGBT who are faced yeah. with such difficult situations. So in my next life, I plan to come back as an Iranian woman. <laughs> like the work that Iranian women are doing at the moment around challenging this mandatory veiling. And I think for LGBT people in Iran, what we have learned across Western liberal democracies is that feminism is intrinsically linked with LGBT rights. The struggle to control women is the same struggle to mandate men into gender norms and stop them from stepping out of it. The struggle to keep women in their place has to, by definition, keep men in their place as well and keep them privileged. So. For LGBT people in Iran and across the Muslim world, the answer to our struggle is the secular education of Muslim women. Whatever you can do to support the emancipation and the uprising and the empowerment of women of Muslim heritage, LGBT people, in my opinion, should do so. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. دارالعلوم دیوبند در هندوستان یه فتوای دیگه منتشر کرده یکی دیگه اینا دیوبند اینا هر روز که این دوباره اینا دوباره. که هر روز همین کارا رو میکنن هر پنج ثانیه یه فتوای جدیدی منتشر میکنن میدونی که این مرکزشون اصل اون کمیته اصلی مرکزی آشخالدون فتوا فتوا همینجوری به طور مرتب هر روز فتوا میده اینا یه ماشین هر روز که کاش که فقط هر روز هر چند دقیقه یه بار مثلا دیر شده یه رو به فتوا نخوره بعد این فتواشو خیلی مسخره است به سونیا گفتن که نباید برین با به عروسیای شیعان یا به مثلا جشنای افطارش رو نباید برین نباید باشین اصلا به هیچ اصلا افطار هم نخورین و خیلی کار بعدی 
اینا مثل که اصلا هوادار جدایی کاملن مثلا تمام مردم دنیا تحت کردن مثلا تبعیض و جدایی نباشه اینا خبر برای اینا کارشونه که برعکس چه جدا کنه آدم‌ها رو به اشکال مختلف <تصفيق> جالب اینه که خب شیعیان و سونیا همه مسلمونن فکر کن وای به حال ماها دیگه اصلا نه فقط با ما نباید عروسی ما نیاین دعوت نیستین اولا دیوبندی ها که اصلا دعوت نیستن خاکستر انواع اقسام چیزایی که اصلا قابل دست مثلا نه بعد اصلا هیچ با شما اصلا حرف نه بزن شما اصلا خوب نیستین آره اصلا و خب بعد که خب شلوخ شده چون آدم ها گفتم بابا ما دوستای شیعه داریم دوستای سنی داریم نمیتونیم که نریم همدیگه رو ببینیم بعد دیگه انقدر سر صدا شده که گفتن که نه 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 ما نگفتیم قدغنه فقط داشتیم یه پیشنهادی میدادیم خب لطفا پیشنهادم ندین چون هیچکی پیشنهادای شما رو نمیخواد بشنوه من واقعا یه فکر میکنم این دی دستگاه ماشین دیوبند که همش در فتوا اینجوری میده آدم رو هر جدا بکنین فکر نمیکنین بعد اصلا در اونجا رو ببندن که فتوا ندن اینطوری این پیشنهاد یا این یه فتوا حالا این پیشنهاد بزنین کنار ولی اصلا ما این ماشین فتوا آخه درسته واسه اعلامیه بدن که آدم ها رو جدا کنی از هم ببندن به نظر رو دنن دیو بند دیو بند بسته بشید زنان در ایران برای اولین بار در چهل سال تونستن وارد استودیوم آزادی بشن و دو تا بازی فوتبال رو تماشا کنن در جام جهانی یکی بین ایران و اسپانیا و یکی بین ایران و پرتغال متاسفانه تیم ملی نبرد ولی خیلی عالی بازی کردن ولی یک واقعا برد خیلی بزرگه برای زنان در ایران که این درای تفکیک جنسیتی رو شکوندن و وارد استودیوم شدن و آسمون به زمین نیامد و اتفاق مطمئنی. عجیب قریب نیفتاد مثل هر ج... مردم دنیای هر جا فوتبال نگاه میکنن زن و مرد با هم معاشرت میکنن زندگی میکنن فوتبال نگاه میکنن هیچ اتفاقی, اتفاقی نمیافته <تصفيق> و واقعا هیچ اتفاقی نمیافته توی مسابقات هم کسایی که رفته بودن روسیه و مسابقات هم ببینه همین صحنه و واقعیت رو به تمام دنیا نشوندن و نشوندن که جامعه ایران و استانداردی رو که مردم میخوان با اونی که جمهوری اسلامی گذاشته کاملا متفاوت واقعا این نشون دهنده ای آینده واقعا زیبایی برای مردم ایران یه جامعه ای که مذهب توش این نوع دخالت ها رو نداشته باشه و واقعا یک موفقیت خیلی زیبایی برای ما در این حالی که تیم ملی نبرد ولی چقدر خوب بازی کردن آره فکر شما خیلی هوا داره میکردیم خیلی زیادی جیغودات زیادی کردن ولی نبردن این ما رو میاره به پایان برنامه این هفته امیدوارم از شو این هفته ما خوش اومده باشه تا هفته آینده